and there's bad news. I'm going to bring you both. Hi, my name is Christopher Westfall. I do Medicare for a living, helping people from coast to coast to figure out what kind of Medicare insurance is good for them. And through this channel, we've reached over 10 million people updating you about what's new with Medicare and what you need to know in order to navigate your Medicare career. There are a whole bunch of things going on, but first let me just share with you what we did in our office to make this larger, right? We colored Easter eggs last week in preparation for Easter. Why did we do this? Because we feel like sometimes it's a good idea to put the headset down, spend some time getting to know your coworker and doing things together. We have some really amazing, really good artists in the office. As you can see, that's my wife, Nicole, on the left-hand side, wearing her Nona shirt. And if you'll stick around to the end, I'm going to show you a sneak peek of my favorite granddaughter. I only have one granddaughter, Scarlett, and she is progressing very nicely. Had her one-year birthday last month. Boy, we've got a lot of news about Medicare, though. Let me get to it and then stick around. I'm going to show you the latest with Scarlett. First, today we're going to cover... Drug plan fiasco anticipated in 2025. Matter of fact, one of the Part D companies just announced to the agents, and I'm not allowed to tell you who it is, they're pulling out of the market for next year. Why? I'm going to go over what's happening with that. And if you do have a drug plan for next year, or you have a Medicare Advantage plan with a drug plan built in, in the industry we call that an MAPD plan. If you have an MAPD plan or a Part D drug plan, you want to know what's happening in 2025. I'm going to cover that. More hospitals are threatened by Medicare Advantage. I'm going to let you hear it all in their own words. I'm not going to say one word. I'm just going to show you what just came out in the last week about it. And more health systems are revolting to CMS, and they're saying you've got to get this Medicare Advantage jug under control. In their own words, you'll hear that from the different article. Medicare Advantage chaos. Another reporter goes into what's happening with people that are on Medicare Advantage right now that are trying to get off, or they tried to get off before March 31st, which was the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period, better known as the disenrollment period of the year, where you could go back to original Medicare. It is quite chaotic, and it was in our office too. And a new Medicare scam. Somebody's going to prison, and you should probably know about it. And lastly, some organization marched on the White House to talk to specifically the Biden administration about, you got it, Medicare Advantage. We're going to go into the first part of it right now. But rather than me read these things to you, because so many people think that I'm biased for whatever reason, I'm going to show you all the different organizations. Most of all, these are nonprofit, and you can hear it in their own words. But I'm using right now my favorite reader. Mr. Further savings and simplifications are coming. Starting in 2025, beneficiary drug costs will be capped at $2,000, indexed annually for growth in Part D. There will be no change of payment responsibility in the coverage gap and no differential treatment of the manufacturer discounts for brand and generic drugs. Instead, out-of-pocket expenses will be defined in a way that more closely matches the usual understanding of that term, and once a beneficiary spends $2,000 in the deductible and initial coverage phases, they will pay $0 out of pocket for the rest of the year. To illustrate, to illustrate the impact of these changes, a recent, to illustrate the impact of these changes, a recent KFF report examined three commonly taken cancer drugs, each priced at well over $100,000 a year. In 2023, Medicare Part D enrollees who used any of these drugs for the entire year faced nearly $12,000 in out-of-pocket costs. In 2024, they will no longer be responsible for $8,000 to $9,000 of that amount. And next year, when the $2,000 cap takes effect, they'll save even more. That's the good news. I always like to start with the good news first. So in 2025, your drugs are going to be capped $2,000 out of pocket. That's really, really good news. But unfortunately, what goes up must come down. And what could the bad news possibly be? I've mentioned to you before, every time somebody, some well-meaning politician, or in this case, regulator, says that you have to crack down on what you're doing, you have to give more money away, you insurance companies have to take it on the chin, you have to give a $2,000 max out of pocket on drugs and you have to absorb all the rest. What do you think the insurance company is going to do? I can tell you they're going to pass that on to you, the consumer. 
And I was quoted on that in a Newsweek article last week. But here are the other people now saying the exact same thing. I want you to hear this in their own words. As the studies are showing, the Part D drug plans are going to ratchet up restrictions on coverage. That's right, folks. What they give, they take away. The USC report comes as the Inflation Reduction Act is changing the structure of Part D payments and plan liabilities. If plan costs increase as a result of the IRA, the plans may respond by pursuing savings elsewhere including through more aggressive use of formulary exclusions, prior authorization, and step therapy. Oh, here it comes. Wait a minute. What does that mean exactly? Through the use of aggressive use of formulary exclusions, which means the drugs that you want may not be available at all. Prior authorization. We know what that is. That came from Medicare Advantage World. That says you have to get their permission first before you have the drug at all. So yeah, your drug may be capped, it's the same thing that they do on Medicare Advantage, folks. They say, yes, you only have a max out of pocket of 3000 6000 8000 9000 whatever it is. But how do you get to that max out of pocket if they deny, 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 deny care? Hmm, makes you wonder. Here's another story. Says the, about the different health systems that are considering dropping Medicare Advantage. And what Nearly half of health systems are considering dropping Medicare Advantage according to a survey from the Healthcare Financial Management Association and eliciting insights. Here are five things to know. One, of the 135 health system CFOs surveyed, 16% are planning to stop accepting one or more Medicare Advantage plans in the next two years, and another 45% said they are considering doing so. Two, 19% stopped accepting one or more Medicare Advantage plan in 2023. 3. The report cited onerous authorization requirements and high denial rates as the driving forces behind health systems' frustration toward Medicare Advantage. 4. Despite tensions with some health systems, the Medicare Advantage program had a 95% quality satisfaction rating among enrolled members in 2023. 5. Health system-owned Medicare Advantage enrollment continues to grow, but providers' share of the national market sits at 13%, compared to 17% in 2019. Over 100 hospitals, health systems, and providers signed on to a call for CMS to do more on Medicare Advantage denials. Members of Premier, a healthcare services company, penned a letter to CMS Administrator Chiquita brooks Lashur on March 21st, requesting CMS collect more data on claims denied by Medicare Advantage plans and take enforcement action against plans not following the coverage rules set out by Medicare. A survey of Premier's member hospitals and health systems found 15% of claims to private payers are denied. A slightly higher portion of Medicare Advantage claims 15.7% are denied, according to the survey. Hmm. Oh, by the way, did you hear that Wagovi was now approved to be used with Medicare patients? What's that about? So let me put all this in perspective for you. You have the perfect storm coming for your drug plans. You have the government telling the insurance companies they have to cap your cost at $2,000. And they're working fast behind the scenes to see how they can remain in business, if not profitable. So that's going to drive up the premiums on the Part D plans massively. The rumor in the industry is they're already cutting the brokers out completely. I saw that coming last year. And we took action on that. Probably the first in the industry. The first that I know of of thousands of agents who did. Anyway, I digress. And then you have Medicare saying the insurance companies can now cover Wagovi, what's going to happen with that? Americans may soon have more access to a popular and expensive drug for weight loss. Medicare says it plan its plans can cover Wagovi, but only for certain patients. NBC senior business correspondent is Christine Romans. Of course, she is here with more. Christine, good to see you. How many Americans could this affect in the future? It's fair to say millions. This could be millions of Americans. You have 65 million Americans who are on Medicare. And for people who have heart disease, risk of stroke, their doctors can now prescribe this 
uh, this important drug uh, to help them reduce the risk of heart attack, stroke, and other serious cardiovascular disease. So this is really a game changer for public health. Medicare is not allowed by law to cover weight loss because of the FenFen scandal 20 years ago, but it can now cover it for heart disease, which of course goes along with obesity. 70% of Americans suffer from being overweight or obesity. So this is a big, big population of people. So what if you do want to get it covered for weight loss? Is that just out of the question? Is that on the table people are thinking about? It's still out of the question. You, you have to talk to your doctor about whether you are at higher risk for heart disease because of uh, of, of your obesity, right, right. So that's really important here. But there's also the problem with how much it costs. If you don't have this prescription, I mean, it's $1,300 for one package, which lasts, lasts a month. It's $16,000 for a year's supply. But these insurers now, mostly they mimic what Medicare does. So other insurers may start covering this as well. But here's the thing. We know that being overweight is very expensive in terms of your lifetime of medical risks. So insurers now have to start weighing whether it's really important to get more people these drugs who can tolerate it so that they can prevent other kinds of uh, health problems down the road. And potentially bring down costs. Absolutely, exactly. Yeah, impact is going to be huge for a lot of Americans. Christine, thank you. Okay. Good weekend. But until they potentially yeah, bring down the costs, OV, but what do you think is going to happen right away to the Part D profitability or not from the insurance company? And that's why one of them is already pulled out of the market for next year. Again, I'm not allowed to tell you who it is because... We can't talk about changes with Medicare benefits with the companies that we may or may not have represented until October 1st, but you'll be getting that annual notice of change if you were affected by that. Here's another story that's pretty interesting. It's brand new as well. It says Medicare Advantage chaos is making life more difficult for hospitals, insurers, and seniors. This is not just me bringing this to light. Well, maybe it is, but I'm just telling you it's not my opinion. It's what's happening in the world right now, literally. Hospitals and insurance giants are clashing over wildly popular Medicare Advantage plans as both sides to protect. They try to protect their profits. That's what they're really concerned about. And I'm in the industry and telling you the truth. Many seniors enrolled in these plans are caught in the crosshairs. More hospitals and healthcare providers are terminating agreements. I brought you two other stories to talk about that. With insurers that provide these private sector alternatives to Medicare. Please remember, Medicare Advantage is not Medicare at all in any shape, form, or fashion. It is a replacement for Medicare. It says it here, a private sector alternative to Medicare. Medicare is what you paid in for your whole entire life that you should have access to. And I'll get to that in just a minute, how those work. Citing why? Too many denials, delays, and refusals to pay for care that, oh, here it is. Government-run health insurance would typically cover. That's right, folks. Original Medicare would have covered that. And this is what we see over and over and over and over again. But what's happening is as people get older, um, when you first sign up for your Medicare Advantage plan, um, there's a set of providers that you can go to. And so this is the issue. People are switching because they're looking for their doctors and you're restricted in what doctors are in your network. So the ones you initially sign up for are not necessarily still there or the ones you need as the years go on, as you get older, you might need a specialist, you might need some more doctors, you might develop you know, chronic illnesses in some way, and those providers do have to get special authorization, and that can take forever or it can be rejected. So the people I talk to often feel they're trapped. So this is your opportunity to say, okay, I can look around and I can see if the doctors I need to go to are in a new plan. A Medicare Advantage plan, or you can go back to traditional Medicare right now. And again, that is, ter is terrific in the sense that you have no restrictions on your medical and healthcare providers, but there are some extra costs involved there that you need a Medigap policy, it's called. And here's the caveat that, that makes that a little tricky, is that a Medigap policy, um, when you first enroll in Medicare, you, they have to uh, approve you for this extra coverage, uh, regardless if you have a pre-existing condition. But after one year, if you switch back from Medicare Advantage to Medicare, if you've made that decision, uh, they no longer have to. So you might not get the ability to get one of these plans if you have a pre-existing condition. Doesn't mean you won't, it just could be a problem. So.
It really is important. I think the main issue is trying to take control of your Medicare, uh, your, your medical care. And Medicare Advantage has some great incentives there to do so. But this is your time if you don't want to get locked out of using those physicians, those specialists you need, and you're a little upset about your network, now's your time to take action. We are going to see some changes coming up. New rules came down in January, starting in 2026. Authorizations by Medicare Advantage are going to have to speed up so people have a better idea of what coverage they can get. That was really good. I like her a lot. And I like the fact that she talked about that prior authorization fix, which is not really a fix. It's a requirement that they give that denial quicker than they did before, only kicks in in 2026. That's a really good story. I like that. If you've not yet done so, you should probably subscribe to our channel as of the day that I'm making this for you. There's 105,000 of you that have done so, over 10 million views on the channel. You don't want to miss out on things happening with Medicare because it could affect you or someone you care about, someone who's deciding what to do with their Medicare. Please share this channel with them so they can become fully informed. It may seem counterintuitive that an insurance agent that helps people with Medicare is on here telling you the backstory of what's going on in the industry and what the bad parts are of the choices that you could make. That's one thing that we do that's unique here, I think, is we tell both sides of the coin. They don't just try to sign you up for a free plan and then tell you good luck, which is what most of our competitors in the industry, unfortunately, are doing. We talk about a Medicare scam that was just revealed this past week and what's going on with it. This laboratory owner was doing the same thing that I was interviewed on the local affiliate news station here about three years ago for. They were billing your Medicare number or things like genetic testing. Oh, it could be great if it was just that easy. Florida man pled guilty in his role to scheme to defraud Medicare by billing over-the-counter COVID-19 test kits and genetic tests that were ineligible for reimbursement, and they would pay telemarketers to find your Medicare number, and then they, would, they made at least $30 million in fraudulent claims that they were submitted. Unbelievable. But that Turkey is going to jail. This is interesting. This is a recent video. I'll show you just a clip of it because I don't want it to be boring. But don't you hear this organization? They literally went to the White House and they told them with 26,000 signatures, they said, we want you to refuse to get ripped off with Medicare Advantage. It's hurting people. It's denying care. And it's costing a fortune more than original Medicare would cover. Here's what they did. Alex Lawson. I'm the executive director of Social Security Works. We're here today at the White House. As you can see, we're going to deliver uh, 28,000 petition signatures to the Biden administration saying very clearly, do not give in to the corporate insurers. Do not uh, let them bully you. The American people are on your side when it comes to holding the corporate insurance companies to account. Uh, and what they're doing is denying care. They're delaying and denying care. It leads to harm and death. Everywhere I go across this country, uh, when I bring up prior authorizations, people are outraged that these corporations can make billions of dollars denying people care. So today we're delivering uh, these petition signatures to the Biden administration to say, hold the line against the corporate insurers, take them to account, hold them to account, hold them to your own rules, to the rules that are already in place. Uh, the Biden administration has uh, put forward some new rules on prior authorizations, on overpayments. We did polling. It's incredibly popular with the American people. And the American people want the administration to do more. No one wants to get ripped off by their insurers. Uh, and in Medicare Advantage, it's even more insidious because they call themselves Medicare Advantage, but they have nothing to do with Medicare. It's the same corporate insurers like United Health who make tens of billions of dollars doing one thing and one thing alone taking our money and denying our care. That's their business model. 
and we have to stop them from doing that in Medicare Advantage. Let me explain a little bit how the con works. What they do is they rip off the government, they delay and deny care, and they make billions of dollars. Then they take a tiny piece of that and they spend it on campaign ads. They spend it, they saturate this town. And their, their message is clear. If you don't give us the money, we're going to deny health care to people. We're going to hurt or kill people. That's the threat. You can see it right now. Uh, and the truth is that threat works. That's how they've gotten to where they are today. But what we're here is saying the American people have had enough uh, and don't give in to their threats. Do not give them more money to continue denying the American people uh, health care and profiting in that way. Uh, so on April 1st, what we want to see is the Biden administration holding the line on the final rate notice of what these corporate insurers are paid. Uh, and I'm optimistic that. The well, at least he's optimistic about what the administration is going to do for Medicare Advantage reimbursements for 2025. Here's a sneak peek into our personal life. She is a year old and she is so awesome. Very, very smart girl. And of course, as her grandpa, I'm her favorite. I mean, it's just a little bit unbiased, maybe a little bit slightly unbiased. See, I think she just said grandpa. Nobody else believes me, but I think it's right here. See, grandpa pop. See, I think she actually said grandpa, but she loves hanging out with her Nona and her grandpa a lot. Of course, her mommy, but I want to be her best friend because she is just a really, really cool kid. I told you I'd make sure that you understood the difference, the difference between original Medicare or Medicare Advantage, which is actually giving up your original Medicare for one contract year. And then every year it looks different because they can change everything. They can change your doctors. They can change your hospitals. They can change a whole bunch of stuff every single year. And it's, it's just kind of bizarre. That's Medicare Advantage. They can deny care. They can push you into a network. If you go outside of that network, they could literally not cover anything if they wanted to. And then you have original Medicare, which you paid into your whole life. Part A is no cost to you. If you've worked more than 40 quarters, that's 10 years of adult full-time working in your life, which most people all have. And then you don't have a network. You can go to any provider from coast to coast. This, by the way, is information taken from the Medicare and You guidebook, which you really, really, really should read. Now, both of these things are incomplete. On Original Medicare, you should have something that goes along with it called a Medigap or Medicare supplement because Original Medicare only pays 80% of those costs. If you go out of the network, there is no network. I mean, if you go out of the hospital to Part B providers across the country. But you have that other 20% to pay, and there's no max out of pocket on that 20%. The good news is nobody's going to tell you you can't go. They're not going to tell you you needed a referral or prior authorization or utilization management or step therapy or the things that they want you to try that's cheap before they actually have to pay for care. No, all that happens over here on the Medicare Advantage world. On the Medicare Advantage world, conversely, it's got pretty horrible coverage for cancer treatment. So you really, really, really should have a cancer insurance plan if you have a Medicare Advantage plan. Just look, don't believe me, just look at your summary of benefits on chemotherapy, radiation therapy, cancer treatment. That's if you play by the rules, if you go in the network, if you do only the treatments that they'll pay for, then and only then does your max out of pocket help you at all. But even still then, you're paying 20% of all the costs, just as if you had no coverage whatsoever and you were just stuck on original Medicare. You need cancer insurance, a cash cancer policy if you're going to be on Medicare Advantage. And then we have hospital indemnity plans available too. Somebody came to us the other day at a $500 per day hospital admission, and they had that for seven days. That's a lot of money to come out with out of pocket. And if they had a hospital indemnity plan for about $30 a month, it would pay for that for them, especially if they're already enjoying a zero premium plan, then having these tiny little policies to shore up your coverage, at least help you. 
with the cancer policy, just think about this. This is what happened with my grandmother. Literally, you'll have cancer. You'll be on a Medicare Advantage plan. You'll run up to your max out of pocket. You'll get right to the end of the year and thinking, oh, my gosh, everything's great because I hit my max out of pocket. January 1, that resets. And you have to hit pay all those costs again until you hit that max out of pocket on your Medicare Advantage plan. Original Medicare has no such thing as we talked about. Anyway, we can help with all those things. If you want to reach out to us, here are some websites that may or may not be of service to you. Uh, if you're looking for a drug plan, if you're brand new to Medicare, or when it's the time of the year that you can change drug plans, it's going to be a very, very interesting time for drug plans in 2025 and beyond. Companies are going to come and go. Uh, the premium is going to go through the roof. They're going to try to push as much cost sharing as they can get away with legally. And you probably won't find agents that are that are willing to help you on the drug plans because we'll lose money every time we would do that. So you could go to a website and do it yourself. I think it's better than the one that's offered at Medicare.gov, but it's the companies that we've chosen to partner with and do contracting with. And if you want to look at Medicare Advantage plans, you can look at the ones near you, the ones that we've contracted with on a direct to consumer, which means Medicare thinks it's easy enough for you to just do this on your own because it is. And you can see those plans that are available in your backyard. And if you're in an eligible time, you can sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan or at least see what they're offering. Um, and then if you want to see how it, underwriting works, if you want to get on a Medicare supplement or Medigap plan, maybe you're already on one and you want to change plans. Maybe you're on a plan F or a plan G and you're paying way too much money. Yes, you can do something about it. Go to SeniorSavingsNetwork.org forward slash underwritten. I explain the entire process of underwriting and get, give examples there to see if that's something that you can do. How do you get cancer insurance? I'm glad you asked. You go to cancerplan.us. It's fully explained there. And then if you're on Medicare due to disability, which is a lot of folks, you're under the age of 65, you want to know what those options are. You can go to another one of my websites called medicareondisability.com, medicareondisability.com. And if you go to our website, just SeniorSavingsNetwork.org. Click on the green button that says click here for Medicare help. We'll walk you through how we can help you. Interesting comment recently from uh, one of the viewers said, from one agent to another, you rock. I so agree with you. Why put your clients and yourself at risk of not getting the care that they need? He's talking to them here about Medicare Advantage. You care about your clients. Cheers. And may you always have success because you are honest. The client just needs to read the Medicare handbook to see where your guidance is spot on. It's right there in the book. If you just care to read it, they want to make sure that you have it when you're turning 65. I think it's a good idea. And I really believe that experience matters. I've been doing this, helping people with insurance for 27 years, just now getting the hang of it. No, I got the hang of it a long time ago. We have a team of people in here that are qualified licensed agents from coast to coast, and we can help you if you're looking at Medicare choices that you have to make. Our phone number is here. It's 800-729-9590. But the easiest way to reach us, because you can actually book your own appointment when it's convenient for you and not play phone tag with you're available, we're available, we're on the phone, we're on the phone. Sometimes people think that uh, agents like ours just sit there with their feet up on the desk and wait for the phone to ring and say, hi, let me take you through everything from A to Z. If you're a specialist, your brain surgeon, your cancer specialist, are not sitting there with your feet on their desk, just waiting for people to call and walk in so they can start treatment immediately. No, they have to make an appointment, but we make it so convenient that you can choose the convenient time for you, the day, time, and all that. If you just do that on our website, you'll see how easy that is. And you can scan this cool thing with your phone and that will reach out to us there. That's back when I was in law enforcement, educating people about don't become a victim of crime. I don't like it when people are crime victims. My name is Chris Westfall. Thanks so much for watching. Please comment below, comment on this video if you have any interest in taking part in what's going on with like the petition drive. They're trying to get the administration to start protecting seniors now finally. What are your thoughts about the two different avenues to Medicare? What are your thoughts about the drug plans and the creative ways that right now they're trying to figure out what they're going to do so that in 2025 they don't lose money? Because as it looks right now, the government is geared up to take all the money directly from the insurance companies. And we all, we both know that's not going to be allowed to happen. They're not going to let that happen. I want to know what your thoughts are. So please check it out in the comments below and leave your comment. Thanks so much for watching. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. In the Medicare Advantage plan, what you are doing when you're enrolling that is, is, is enrolling in a private plan 
with all the problems of private health insurance that's not even known in the traditional Medicare